You probably might even get a message on your screen saying this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> so I really want to welcome you all to evening practice. Hope you're well. Um, really happy to see you, Dorothy and Jacqueline, Vanessa. Yay! Hi, Lynn. Good evening. Welcome back, Joe, Siobhan, Colette, and Penny, and Sandra, and also Helen. If Helen comes in in a wee moment. So, just as you come into standing from your busy day, uh, which we call Mountain Tabasana in a yoga practice, what I'd like you to do is just let your arms dangle and relax. And you will want to be literally looking down at your feet. And I hope they are all bare feet. And I'd love you to literally spread out your toes. And as you spread your toes, I really want you to lift them as well. And as you lift your toes, let them lay down in length. So when you lift your toes up, what happens is, first of all, I'd love you to be able to feel the transverse arch. So the foot is your proprioceptive base. That's the first thing you want to know about, especially when for most of us in daily functioning life, we don't want to fall. And we want to have an enhanced awareness of our posture and how we carry our weight and how we stand, how we weight bear through the feet. Mountain Tadasana really helps us to do that. So lifting all the toes and then literally kind of spreading the toes down. So instead of lifting them, contracting, so you'll feel the front of the foot kind of become quite, quite tense and pushing into the forefoot and then releasing all the toes instead of letting those toes just dump down and your foot sort of flatten. And it might be that you have to lift your toes even 10 or 20 times. Can you feel your inner arch activating? So this is one of the quickest ways to try and get access to this lovely, supportive inner arch, the medial arch. We also have a lateral arch and we have the transverse arch across the front here. In terms of deep anatomy, the foot actually has four arches, but for purposes of yoga, we'll think about those three definitive arches. So lift the toes, release the toes, lift the toes, release the toes, lift and spread. Try and get space in between your toes, just like you do with your hands and fingers. And then once all of your toes are laid down and we want to come up through the lower leg to the knee to the pelvis, let your knees bend just very gently, just a little bending of the knees, almost as if you're just sitting into a really high chair and then let them wiggle off. You know that sense of almost walking on the spot and you'll get this little feel of wiggle. It's really technical. Into that pelvis. And then try to sense this idea of meeting the earth with compassion and then rebounding up through the earth. So rather than standing your ground, which is a common expression that you might hear when you think about somebody's character, you know, oh, yeah, I was pretty good, I stood my ground, I made my point. Instead, have a sort of more of a compassionate, friendly relationship with the way that your feet meet the earth. So we haven't moved, we're standing still in the pose of mountain, but we're paying attention to spreading out those feet. And what I want you to think about in the feet now is that four arch in the forefoot. So that's going across the front. The outer lateral arch coming along the sides, the outer sides of the right foot, the outside of the left foot. And then the inner arch, the inner arch, the medial, medial arch, which is coming along the middle. So therefore you've got a triangle, yeah? For, for, for the sake of ease of sense of this, you have a triangle. Now, if you go to those 
points, those points of that triangle, and then come up to your ankle, you've got a pyramid. And that's what I want you to imagine. I want you to think about the essence of a tripod on the base of your foot, left and right, and then a three-dimensional pyramid as your proprioceptive base. Now, on top of that pyramid is your ankle joint, uh, the, the talus and the calcineus, the, the subtalar joint, the, ankle, the true ankle joint, where the foot flexes and extends like this. And then we're coming up through the legs, we come into those knees, and they are not locked. You want to have that sense of not a bent knee, not a firm locked out knee, just a sense of buoyancy there. And then can you feel a gentle sway? Now I've put my hands around what I might call the pelvic shelf, just kind of those, that outer bony edge. Some people might go on top, like around the waist. You know, everybody's pelvic rim is gonna be somewhere else, somewhere different. So maybe just sway forward and back, but don't lift your feet. So you've got to keep a tiny softening in those knees as you sway your weight forward and sway your weight back. And it's a really subtle practice tonight. So I do want you to come into the spirit of exploring and inquiry and know that there's no fix. There's no Ross said this is right, Ross said this is wrong. There is I wonder if I can feel this in my own body. And then can you a little bit sway left and sway right? And you know, your arms can dangle or you can keep them kind of around here. When you keep the hands around the pelvis basin, because the feet and the pelvis talk to one another in terms of postural awareness, you might feel a little shift through the bones, you might also feel a shift through your femur bones. So that's the thigh bones, of course. So all of these little awarenesses are about your central nervous system talking to your motor neuron system, and that's proprioception. So the foot is the proprioceptive base, and proprioception is your ability, I've turned now into little circles, is your ability to be fully aware of where your body is in the space around it. And good proprioception is the ability to move fluidly, you know, and have motion and equilibrium. So all of the muscles and joints working as a great team. Now, all the time that I'm talking to you in this session, and I'm just doing these gentle movements to keep you going, you and I haven't moved our feet. They're getting really kind of not glued to the earth, but they're really finding those bones, 28 bones, those 33 joints, and there's all that buoyancy happening. And that inner arch is like a trampoline. So when you are literally jumping, there is this springboard effect of the arches. That's why the arches are so important to your proprioception. Okay. So let's come now into uh, areas beyond the pelvis. So draw yourself in towards the waist and the navel. And you don't have to suck the navel to the spine like we might think about in Pilates. We don't want to suck it in. You don't want to be rounded. You want to grow tall. So let's bring the palms into the heart center and let the arms let us come a little bit taller. So as the arms come overhead, or Hasta Tadasana, lengthen up. And as you lengthen up, notice, has your pelvis gone backwards? So have you turned into the duck bum? Do you notice if your back is flat and you've tucked that tail? Or can you keep that pelvis in what we would call is neutral. So in other words, level hips. So breathing in, taking the arms overhead, keeping a steady pelvis. And let's exhale and let the arms release down. And you can close your eyes for this as well if you wish, because 
even though when we balance on one leg, we really do initially to improve balance, want to have the eyes open. You also want your ears to be open. The inner ear is working with the vision as the vestibular system, keeping the writing reflex of the head perfectly stacked on the body and the eyes to the horizon. Now you would also wonder, why do we need to do so much work in our shoulders? Well, if proprioception is off, if pelvis is off, if I'm always standing like this, holding something in this hand or uh, mouse work, you know, on the computer, and then my shoulders are off and so is my head. And then eventually there's a habit and there's a head tilt or a neck tilt. Pain is also a disruptor of your proprioceptive ability. So we really want to bring our energy through this beautiful mountain and feel way more posturally aware. So you feel really, really well stacked from the tripod pyramid of your foot base. And you also don't want to have all your weight down one leg and all your weight down one hip and one leg, especially when you're standing in both feet. Okay, so I'm now gonna just move off of that position and come on to, kind of towards the front of the yoga mat, but for purposes of the demo, I'm kind of in the middle, but you will be necessarily at the front of your mat. So if you've also moved onto your mat surface, reconnect to those fabulous feet, mountain, pranamasana, and extend the arms overhead as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, take the hands to your hips and fold into a halfway lift. And as you fold, feel and see the pull through the inner arches and the lift through the inner seams of the legs. So you might be bringing your fingertips down to earth. You might feel you want to tip your weight into the forefeet, sway again, tip your weight into the heels a little bit, but then find that you are centered. So your hands are maybe on the hips, on the thighs, on the shins, or fingertips are to the earth and you are feeling the firming of the legs. So we're going to lift the kneecaps, drop through the front thighs, and notice how firm the legs are. I know that some of you might want to bend your knees and lengthen, bend the knees and lengthen. And by the way, if it's not good for you to be that folded for any reason, of course use your yoga block. So I'd love you to be able to sense when you are in a tabletop back that you're able to access the energy of the front thigh, the lengthening of your back thigh, but also the connection from the inner arch to the inner seam of the leg and up into the root and the groin. So this creates neural pathways that mean that when you pause, pause in this posture, I'm really asking you to explore more refinement in how you respond to your feet, ankles, and your legs. And that's why you might have to stay for a little bit longer here, just noticing the power and strength in those legs. And then release up, come back to standing, and literally just feel how vital were those legs. And when we shake them off, we get a little wiggle again. Um, they, we're asking the muscles there to be a little bit softer. So again, that is something else that needs to be fully um, within your awareness is how active are the muscles in the legs and how strong they feel versus that sense of softening. So pranamasana, palms into the heart center. Let breath happen, closing your eyes. And where are you carrying your weight? What does it mean 
for you right now to be perfectly centered, to feel that your weight isn't in the forefoot and toes, it isn't in the back line and in the heels, it is perfectly evenly distributed between the left half and the right half, the forefoot and the hind foot. And for most of us, you're kind of stacked from the back line because many of us are sedentary and we're hunching over these laptops or we're driving or we're leaning forward. So, you know, I'm not suggesting that you lean back and you stack way back here, but kind of being stacked from the back of the skull with the chin level, really something we are used to, especially also in glasses. So eyes are closed, breathing is really calm and encouraging the central nervous system to be in equilibrium. Because when we balance, we also want to have a balance of mental, emotional and physical energy. So really improving your awareness of your mountain tadasana and therefore your postural habits. Be feeling those shoulders relax away from the ears, but be beautifully stacked over that pelvis and over the center feet. So let's breathe in, receive the inhalation, circle your arms, reach your arms up and overhead, a little pause, and then exhaling and dive forward into your table back and firm the legs. Inhale, exhale here, and potentially you can also, of course, reach for your block if that helps. The back is in a table or it is in a mild back bend. So, Jacqueline, you need to be careful because it would help if you saw yourself in a mirror because currently it looks a little bit rounded in the upper back in the position that you're in right now. Think more of cow pose, not cats, not rounded cat. Think more of, um, lich have a look at me, Jacqueline. Yeah, can you see? Can you see that the tail is lifting and the um, spine is long, but not hunched? So yeah, better, fantastic. Let's take another breath here. On the exhale, fold deeper if it's comfortable for you. Uttanasana. Now as you get down and deep, you really, everyone looking at your toes again, literally manipulate them, pull them apart if they're getting joined together and lift all of your toes again. Literally look at them, spreading the toes, Little light bend in the knees if possible, or a deeper bend, and sit into your Utkatasana. And you can bring your arms forward just like an armchair. So, an easy position would be somewhat like this place the palms facing each other as if you're holding a box. Sit back into those heels, really press out through the feet, and then rise up open up and for those of us that want to extend into your back bend but lifting through the ribs and heart so try and come up into the open space if you wish to and then back into your neutral now i know that was pretty slow because i really want each and every one of you to really improve your internal awareness of your standing pose but let's try again, and we won't do so many breakings or closing eyes on this one. Pranamasana into Urdhva Hastatanasana, breathing in, neutral spine, lengthen that lovely neutral pelvis. Exhale, table back might mean you're in a quarter tilt or a halfway tilt, may even mean fingertip touch to the earth. Firm your legs or walk into your block. And of course, your block can be at several different heights. Feel the power in those legs. So you're going to actively draw the quads into strength, accessing the hamstrings into length, and you're going to feel a hugging 
towards your midline. So you won't see this on the Zoom, but I'm drawing my legs inwards to feel a lift and an energy on those inside thighs. So I'm hugging those muscles inwards to feel the arch lift all the way through to the inner groin. As you exhale, draw yourself into your Uttanasana. Crown down now, look through the gap, keeping your eyes open. Drishti, with the knees softening. Drishti, that is gazing through the legs and gazing or to the tip of your nose. And then sit into a much deeper chair according to your practice. Lift the chest and ribs off of the thighs and take the arms forward parallel. And I tend to call this armchair because I'm reaching my arms parallel. And you and I can also reach them up. But if you reach them up or parallel, you will feel the power in those legs in powerful pose. Ready to lengthen up slowly, mindfully on the in-breath. Potential back bend for opening the front body for some. Maybe circle the arms around. Come back into center. So we want to develop a stronger foundation in our mountain and be able to have a good connection to the feet. Now, currently I'm standing on a soft blanket. Actually, to strengthen your feet, you want to be on your wooden floor, you want to be on your mat, you want to be on unstable surfaces like squidgy, you want to be on the pebbles on the beach, you want to walk up the mountain, you want to go over this crickly patio or the wooden decking. You want to get your feet barefoot at all times. Come back to your steady mountain, reach your arms out to the sides like a warrior two, and maybe the palms are up and maybe the palms are down. So you can choose palms up or palms down or one up and one down. Yeah, just choose what's right for you. And then get ready to lift the heels. Now to lift the heels is known as releve, in Pilates. So what you're trying to do is not lift the heels and pitch yourself forward and fall forward. You're trying to lift upwards through that crown as if you are sliding up a wall. So you may need to do 10 in a row and you even may wish to do more than that, but I'd love it if now that you could hold. So you may want to Let breath pass into the center of the body in a companionable way. So maybe I'm kind of breathing in as I lift onto my heels, let my knees soften a little bit, take a pause, exhale as I reach my arms a little wider, and then maybe I land. And as I land, and as you land, you don't want to rock back onto your heels and you, do, you want to avoid rocking outer um, and inner. You know, so if you turn your foot in and out, invert or either, pronate or supinate, that is suggesting that there needs to be um, more awareness of, of the control of the bones. Remember all those 28 bones, 33 joints. Your arms out. As you glide up and glide down, you can even do a little sit. Glide up, glide down. Have you also noticed that there's a tendency to claw the toes into the yoga mat, the carpet, the rug, whatever you're on? Avoid that as well, okay? So there's a lot about the biomechanics of the foot. And of course, we are feeling this in our calf muscles. You're gonna feel, especially if you do a little knee bend as well, access to gastrocnemius and soleus. Soleus is the deeper level of muscle. I would love it if you could bring that energy into those lovely glutes. So, 
bring your heels together and your feet apart so that you're standing a little bit like a penguin foot, you know? And think about these lovely corsetry muscles that wrap around from the breastbone to the groin and to the inner knee. And squeeze your heels together. So you're going to rise up, balance on the balls of the feet, and please don't grip your buttocks, don't grip the glutes, but tone them and maybe put the hands there and feel that there's some tone. And when you land, if you bend your knees, then of course, we're just in a little ballet plie there. And that's just optional. But this is the idea of again, using the inner seams of the thighs and the gluteals. So I'm going to rise. Now, as I rise, if I come up too high, often your heels and legs will come apart. So when you lift your heels on that releve, could you do it onto a small wedge? Like you're lifting your heels just enough. Maybe you're lifting them onto a little paperback book. Lift and steady your body. Again, if you want to bring your arms out, you can. If that helps you, stay there. And then land and lift. Land and lift. And try and be like elegant with it rather than going and gripping. Yeah, so can you... Think about that lovely idea of a little trampling springboard being in that inner arch and it, you are rebounding off the earth because, you know, your foot, when it walks and it goes heel to toe, it has this action of lengthening and then scooping up and lengthening. So maybe we access some of that visual idea. Okay, let's come out of that action and enjoy that practice, please. And then shake out your legs. Now you might wanna hold the wall, a little touch the wall, chair or table, but you don't have to, yeah? I'm gonna hold the wall momentarily, access all of that lovely stability and strength down through that right leg. So your foot is really strong, it is planted, it is spread, you've lifted your toes, and then circle your left hip. Now, even if you need the wall, it's okay, because while you lightly touch wall, table, or chair, you're gonna do a little bit of extension, that's leg behind, flexion, and you may even go out to the side, and then there will be a circle. And even if you've got a very light touch to wall, table or chair, that standing leg is going to be toned and strengthened while you're doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. So have a little play with your mobility on that left leg. And you can sort of maybe even draw some patterns. And maybe you can bring the leg forward, you can bring it back as if warrior three. You know, this, this is dynamic balancing, being able to move around and not be perfect. Finish that side and then please try the second side. So connect from the whole body a little bit more energy in the left. So as if you've got a tight pair of trunks on. Now, if your hip needs to, it may require a really delicate little circle. And remember, you're not oh, sucking the abs in. You have to be able to breathe. So just be knowing that your body can stand. Your body knows how to stand. It doesn't need a really super strong core. Can you bring the knee forward? Can you bring the leg back? Can you bring the leg to the side? Maybe it comes across, can it circle? All of that could be done in balance, or like I say, you could have been holding the wall. Okay, well done, thank you, Dorothy. And Jacqueline, I can see 
movement and the same thing you know you are remembering even if you're holding that wall to keep eyes to horizon crown on do not hold the wall and look at the floor do not balance and look at your toes that is the vestibular system tipping forward and being mighty confused so please your head well balanced on top of that mountain fabulous can we come back to the mat now and let me move this back in and we're going to step back into some lunges now so we are finding again a quiet and calm closed eyes mountain so palms into your heart to connect to your center of breathing in the chest relax the shoulders close the eyes and if you need to bend your knees so they don't lock because at this moment they don't want to be locked loosen off the legs and be standing in fluid body a body that is receptive to the fluidity of your breath There is no yoga flow without the flow of the breath. Arms overhead as you inhale. Reach into your mountain, back bend for some. Circle the arms, exhale, Uttanasana. Folding deeply. Take the right leg back. And you're in a high lunge. And just as you lift your body enough, Feel again the power and strength of that right leg. So you don't necessarily have to come up into a strong warrior one. You can be lower, but notice again the hugging between the heel of the front foot and the ball of the back foot, as if there's a diagonal pull, because when you're walking, you have a split leg stance. So notice the strength of the legs as you lift your body weight up. And just let that be felt. So hugging from the front, back, front foot to back foot. And we might take our arms overhead again. <sighs> Try not to bear down on that knee. So if it's a problem, you will put your knee down, that back knee, put your hands down. So it can be a low lunge as an option. Okay, let's place the palms down now. Step left leg back and find plank. Now plank is fantastic for your balancing strength because first of all, it is a balance. You're balancing out between the crown, the toes. You can spread the knuckles. What I want you to do is sway over those toes. So push the heels back, pushing your weight back, stretching the heels as if they're coming down to the mat. And then come forward on the toenails and sway back again. And if for any reason this is not good for your arms, shoulders, or wrists, you can always put your knees down and be in a kind of knees down plank or an all four swaying, but you won't necessarily get that same strength and mobility through those toe joints. So see if you can do a little bit of both. Knees are down now. Lift the lower legs. Squeeze your ankles and heels together. And then tops of feet lengthen as your buttocks come back and you come into kneeling pose. And you sit on your feet. Let breath happen. And then come off of the feet if you need to, yeah? So if you're okay, kneeling pose, really put pressure through the front of the feet, which is lengthening the fascia. Now slide your body down to that. Let the chest come down, extended child's pose, and then slide into cobra or sphinx hands beside the face if you're using cobra really lengthen out through the tops of the feet and toes inhale as you exhale roll the shoulders back 
and it's really a lovely mobilization of course of your chest your spine your breathing and of course letting those shoulders draw away from the ears lengthening out now curl your toes tuck your toes hands on the shoulders as you come back kneeling onto the toes kneeling toe stand so look at the toes please if you can kneel release all the toes again and see if you can let your weight maybe come up and then sit back onto that kneeling toe stand and then reach the arms forward and rise into a bent knee dog so in the bent knee dog again push out through the forefeet energize the toes and then lengthen the legs depending on your down face dog ability and in the length of your muscles right leg reaches back and down heel and foot lengthens and then left foot lengthens back and down heel and foot lengthen so you can pedal those legs in your down face dog and then reach your right leg up towards the sky or the stoop knee wall behind you and let the left heel lengthen back. Look at the ankle lengthening back behind those left toes. Swap legs, right foot comes down, reach your left leg up and back. Lengthen the right foot down. Well done everyone, take the feet down. Walk into your easy fold. So you can walk forward mindfully. Spread out the toes, sit back into that chair, really getting connected to the feet again, and lift the arms away, and then rise up to stand. So, we have a wall near us, we might have a table, we might have a chair, and you might feel much more comfortable stepping off of your mat and being on a firmer surface. So some of us might be like Helen, I know you're usually practicing, Helen's often practicing in her kitchen. If you're in your kitchen or you're in a better firmer surface, the idea is again that your feet, the proprioceptive foundation of your body, all part of that ability to stand now on one leg. Now, if you allow one foot to step forward, just even a short distance, it's not too challenging, especially if you're a little bit bend into that front knee, I don't want the knee to surge over the toes, but I'm just saying, is to really commit your weight to that front foot. So eyes to the horizon, crown is on, and let your weight literally several times literally like pouring your weight into that front foot and eventually as you step and commit your left leg will float away now it can bend or it can reach which of course might bring you towards a warrior three okay so i'm gonna Come back as if I was just walking into a warrior three. I'm going to commit to that front leg with breath. Let myself walk in, commit the energy to the right leg. Arms can be forward, backward, to the sides. If I take my arms wide, I'm going to touch my wall. And then I'm just going to float the leg and then step it back so what would be good is if in your mindset instead of being in your yoga practice and thinking i've got to do it right everything's going to be perfect for this practice this evening in our well-being we just step that right foot forward almost like we're walking into our balance because when you do walk heel to toe bed that's the propulsion, the front foot is the propulsion, the back foot is the landing foot. Front foot propulsion, 
back foot landing, the front medial arch propulsion, the landing lateral, and it's almost like you are just receiving the balance. Just receive it. And if you can stay for a little longer, stay, otherwise come back and step back and just practice these. I don't need you to hang out there for 10 minutes. You might want to do that warrior four or five times. What is also important to me is that if you come in and you go like this, or you, it all goes a bit hilarious, just have a giggle, it's fine, it's fine. You are great, you can balance, you can do it, it's easy. That being said, let's swap legs. So be in your mountain. Remember, we don't really want this broader, broader stance. We want to be kind of in line with our general proportions. So your width is your width, mine is mine. Step your left foot forward and feel, you know, as you step that left foot forward and you commit to the weight pouring through that left side. There's a little bit of huggability around the pelvis and then just tip in. And if you don't feel comfortable with tipping today, then do not tip. Just step into your warrior and stand. So your little, um, your, sorry, not your little, your, your right leg, it just floats away because this left leg is super strong. Now those that are very comfortable, and more advanced, what I want you to do now is start to bend that left knee and lengthen. Bending the left knee and lengthen. So you will start to come into a more advanced yoga balance, which is when you are almost single leg squatting, okay? So keep practicing. Sometimes one ankle, one hip, one leg is different. Coming into your warriors, steadiness, Step it back and come in. Now, even if you've got a fingertip touch the wall, remember it's just that. You are not landing on that wall and using that wall. Far better is literally standing on one leg. That's far better than continuously using your props. So we're going to move from that warrior Shake out the legs, be again in your mountain, please, because this isn't an arm balance evening, as you know. And we're going to practice a kind of three way balance. So, being in your beautiful mountain, I'm going to take the fingertips interlace and rest them on the top of the crown. But you could also reach them up and extend. And that might feel different. And it will feel really different from a wide T arm, of course. So choose what's a different arm position. Strong in that left side, float the right leg. Lengthen the right leg, bend the right knee. And then take the leg behind you and pause there. Now lengthen it to the side, push the foot away so it's coming to the side. That might mean you also want your arms to come out. And this is the pattern. Forward, backwards, out to the side. Forwards. And mainly forwards, you can also point. It depends. Backwards is like what we've just done with warrior three. So you might have to take those actions individually. But essentially we are flexion. So I've gone to the second hip now. Strong mountain, eyes to horizon. I'm looking at the screen. Essentially fold, lengthen, fold, lengthen. Can you bring the hip into extension? You know you can because you just did it in warrior. And then level off, bring the pelvis really level, corset, leg to the side. To the side. Now, if you go super sideways, you're going to have to create a counterbalance in your upper body like a seesaw. So maybe we float 
almost into a kind of deeper side bend. It's dynamic. Really allows you to concentrate. And by the way, it also allows you to stay in the room and not be bored. <laughs> okay, so practice, practice, practice. That's the second idea for tonight. And the third idea is using your yoga block or brick. I'm conscious of the time. Time is rushing fast because I'm trying to get so much awareness into just this one hour. Please hold your yoga block from your mountain. I've got to move back a little for this. I'm going to start with my right leg. I'm going to stand my right leg forward, actually, and take that step into confident balance. And then as I lengthen the body, I'm going to place the block down, but not land leaning on it. I'm doing a real tiptoe, a, a, a kissing of the block to the earth. Coming back with that block, balance on my leg, might just take a little mini tree, let everything happen, be breathing, and then go back to retrieve your block. So looking forward, feel it, come back, and, and necessary to bring yourself to a mountain, Samasutihi, bring your feet together. So the core stability there is entering the balance, placing your object down, coming back to your mountain or coming back to a single leg. And then being able to put your block down again, come back to mountain, it compared to us in a mountain on one leg or standing, breathe, and then enter, pick up your block and come back. Whoop, there was one that went wrong, okay? So, that is a pickup balance, okay? And the block isn't very heavy, but can you imagine what that's like if you're picking up some hand weights or dumbbells? So you can improve your core stability if you do not use your yoga block, you use something much heavier. You might have a scatter cushion in your room. You can pick up a shoe, you know, it doesn't matter. You're going to need to try the second side. So center your body, step your left foot forward, commit the weight through, concentrate, placing your item down, coming back, Maybe you do heron. So you feel, I can stand for a moment in heron. I've got myself into a really relaxed, balancing mindset. And you use heron or dancer. And then you go to pick up your item again and come back to mountain. Okay. Well done, Dorothy. I saw that, amazing. Okay, so seriously, time has rushed immensely because proprioception is a sensory awareness, a sensory motor, a central nervous system awareness. You know what? I really needed you to take time out of your busy day and really connect to that standing. So thank you. We're back in mountain. We're going to bring our feet together. Samasati he, center body. Narrow base of support with the feet together. Lengthen up. And feel Tiriyaka Tadasana. And again, if it's possible, even though this isn't a balance, close your eyes and observe which muscles, which parts of your body feel stable and strong as you move, bending, lengthening, and moving side to side. And then just let your body complete your swaying palm tree. Personally, I'm going to take my block. You may want to lie down. It's your choice. 
I'm going to come to seated. So choose to stay with me and seated since tonight's often on a Monday, as you know, we, we can sometimes have a much more chill and relaxing kind of feel to the practice, but I wanted that feel to still be here, even though it was very much about your ability to connect and standing and to be able to understand some of the ways that we can improve our sensory internal, that writing reflex of being on one leg. So if you're joining me in sitting now, bring the same level of awareness to the heels of your pelvis, which are your sit bones. And if you've chosen to lie down in a semi supine, connect to your feet and connect to your butt bones and to your shoulder blades. So maybe sort of start getting into this awareness of the certain bony landmarks in your body that help you to come to a lovely place of feeling and being really stacked. Everybody breathe out and drop the shoulders. And of course, choose now to close your eyes. Let each exhalation allow you to let go of something. Let's especially let go of doing yoga and instead just be who you are now and be where you are. Welcome the essence of calmness and stillness. Whether you are lying on the mat or you're seated, let yourself call to mind a very beautiful tree. And in fact, we will call this tree, the tree of life. The tree that you've chosen could well be a tree that you see at your local park, or maybe it's a tree in your own street or garden, or your favorite tree. Let yourself gaze at the beauty of this tree through your closed eyes and your mind's eye. Think about the tree trunk and the roots. Those roots are inside you as well. You can think about your family tree, your heritage, your history. You can think about those people who allow you to feel supported and grounded. And then think about how yoga allows you to develop your personal growth and has brought you to this wisdom, this self-awareness that you keep on developing. The 
reflect in this stillness of how yoga also offers you youthfulness, vitality and mobility and flexibility of body and mind. As you meditate upon the vision of this beautiful tree of life, contemplate the life that you have now, the life that you lead, the joyful present moments, the wisdom, the spirit, the strength of the tree of life. And know that however this practice landed with you tonight, that you are also strong, wise, and resilient as that tree of life. And very gently, be aware of your breathing. If you have been lying on your back, you may of course want to fold your knees in and rock your body. And if you're sitting, you might just want to take a little rotation in your seat, same way that if you're lying you might want to allow a floor twist. Now of all of the standing balance practice we used tonight, and of course there was the initial postural awareness, know that the other way that you then improve upon this practice is by using your balances with your eyes closed. So always begin with awareness, a good posture, and of course, lengthening the muscles, having mobility and length, then strength, and then kind of bringing the whole body, mind, emotions into a state of comfortable confidence. Because if you attack your balance, you're going to harden and you're going to grip. And really, a better proprioception has a fluid dynamic to it. So as you bring yourself back to seated, if you were lying, this time tonight, rushed by in another second, I want to thank you so much for joining me for this 
exploration. You know, we do them quite a lot. I'm going to turn off um, the recording. <laughs>